We could have talked about a case study that everything went very well, seemingly, no issues, got a big payday at the end. That'd be boring, though, wouldn't it? Maybe not for you. <laughs> That'd be boring for me. <laughs> but it's not always like that, you it's, know? No. It's, uh, it's not. No. I want to talk about one that had a little hair on it. That's what we're going to talk about today. Well, Let's take a look at this deal. <laughs> All right. This is the deal. Um, where was this deal? Where was it and how'd you, how did you find it? So that's where it starts going downhill real quick. <laughs> Because mind you, when I got this deal, I already had a lot of experience. I've already done a bunch of flips and then, you know, you get on the comfort zone. And by that, I mean, you know, we, this particular deal, we were doing virtual. And since I'm a flipper, that's not really my, my go-to thing to do. Uh, we, we looked at the numbers. Numbers looked all right. Um, this is out in the middle of between Brenham, Texas and College Station, Texas. Um, now, Brenham is, a, is an area that I'm personally fond on, of, you know, and uh, I hold properties out there now and all that, but it's, um, it's a risky market. You know, I wouldn't say it's a beginner market, Man, especially right now, because if things are slow here, they're twice as slower on smaller cities and three times as slower where I particularly picked up this house. So, Yeah. I bought it without really looking at it, and I rarely do that. Not only that, there was no comps at all, so I broke another rule. <laughs> um, I can explain it because I, I, it's, it's, it's like buyer's remorse, you know? Like when you're trying to buy something, you know you shouldn't buy it, so you justify it with fake numbers. So, um, so not only that, um, there was no comps to prove this, and... Um, and we decided to move ahead with it. And that's how that got started. How, how did this deal even come across your desk? So we got it from our SEO efforts. So we have a, a website now and uh, people find us online. And, uh, you know, and somebody randomly was looking at our website from that area. And, and we got after that. All right. So SEO, search engine optimization. Someone went on your website uh, and said, hey. Yeah. Seems like a legit company. Let's have them come out and buy our house. And um, yep. it was you. Yeah, and it was us. <laughs> All right. Uh, here's, a, here's another view. Um, so I, I know, like, my experience flipping houses, I had a – you just – you walk enough, you start walking them, and, you know, houses have personalities. You start, start to recognize some patterns. Uh, at least you make some assumptions. They can be good or bad. But what were you thinking here when you're walking this property? Uh, at least – I don't know. I walk the outside first, and I typically go inside. Um, you know, what were you thinking when you were uh, starting to walk this property? This, honestly, this was business as usual for me. Um, having a beat-up house is nothing out of the ordinary. Um, one of the reasons why I'm brave at doing stuff like that is because I have an internal team. And by that, I mean I have my own guys. So we can do a lot. They're very skilled, very knowledgeable. I mean, we can handle from electrical to plumbing to concrete to roofing to with my own internal crew. So when I saw this house, I mean, it was business as usual. The guy walked in. I mean, I saw nothing out of the ordinary. I actually got an inspection because I didn't go out there. So I said, which is not something typical I do either. But I knew I was like, ah, I need some reassurance. So I sent an inspector out there. Uh, the inspector saw some stuff, but he started pitching me with like, oh, well, you know, I can fix this house for you and it'll be about 100000 and you know, and so I was like, no, nah, bro, I'm out. <laughs> so, um, but nonetheless, I knew what I was looking at. And again, it was nothing out of the ordinary. So we kept moving ahead. So yeah, at this point, nothing when it was like that. Nothing Business scary, as usual. just work. All right. So after you finished walking the property, what, um, what was your initial exit strategy? Like, were, were you looking to, this is, this is way out of your normal market. Were yeah. you thinking you're going to buy it, wholesale it, or are you, you going to do traditional fix and flip, rental? What, what were you looking to do? Um, it was going to be a flip for the begin, from the beginning, pretty much. I knew that. There, here, and here's how I justified it, because it's important that we do that. So whenever we are analyzing properties, there's many ways that you can evaluate a property. The most common is you know, uh, with a market analysis, uh, comps and stuff like that. Now, remember what I said earlier, there was no comps here. So 
because there are no comps, I had to use a different approach. So the way I was evaluating my property was through a cost approach. So I decided, okay, so it's beat up. And by the way, I bought it for 155. And, and the reason I wanted to be and buy it is because I really liked that market and I wanted to understand it better. And there's no better way of really getting to know an area than putting some skin in the game, which is not a beginner strategy that I recommend. <laughs> by the way, <laughs> you can get burned quickly. Because here's the, another big lesson learned. Um, that particular area, it's very close to another area. It's called Clay, Texas. And it's a very bad area. Uh, we, we were about two streets away from that, or uh, two blocks or whatever. Or in that case, acres, two acres away from it. Now, why is that important? Because there's a lot of stigma when you're out in those smaller areas and so some people will not show your property just because of the fact that when they grew up they thought that area was a small area a bad area and so the small markets are very cliquish out there so i didn't know that at the time and as i was working on this house i realized that i was in a quote quote bad area and that's actually where things got interesting because the flip was still business as usual i mean the repairs we, we kind of knew and we got a bunch of surprises uh, within the repairs and all that. But it, um, the main thing that happened and why we took the decisions we, we took was because we, know, we knew we were fighting with no comps. We knew we were fighting in an area that was unknown to us. And now that we knew it a little bit better, we knew that it had the stigma that it was a bad area. So, At least you know it. You probably wish you knew that up front. <laughs> So you're going in to flip this, flip this property. The flip, the project itself is business as usual, but now you realize, hey, this is a, a much different area than what you anticipated. Um, you know, did that change your strategy at all? Yes. And that's why we took some of the decisions that we took. We decided we were going to sacrifice some of our profit in order to secure higher chances of selling this property at the end. And so we're always talking about one of the biggest things we get stuck with is uh, over improving properties, right? It's, uh, it's like the, oh, what, is, what is the little cartoon where the, with the bears and all that, a small bear, a big bear, and a middle bear? It has to be just right. You can't own it. Goldilocks? Goldilocks, yeah, I should know this, right? <laughs> so uh, it's like, a, I like to call my daughter on this. <laughs> so um, yeah, it's like, gold, it has to be just right. You can't under improve and you can't over improve or you don't make money. It has to be just right. So this time around, we knew we had to over-improve. Why? Well, because if we didn't, could we really draw people out in the middle of the country in an area that has a very bad stigma and move this property? So we decided, okay, we're going to over-improve from the beginning. Because another mistake I see people off make very often, they do a half-ass flip. We can curse here, right? Go for it. You just did. <laughs> we do a half ass flip. It doesn't move two months later, and they decide, oh, you know what? I'm going to put some quartz on it, and now I'm going to put this and that and see if it sells afterwards. But what ends up happening, it gets deeper on the hole. So when you're making decisions, you got to make decisive decisions early on and, and stick with them and understand what the strategy is going to be. So Yeah, and, and maybe correct me if I'm wrong here. So typically you want to rehab to the comps. Now, yes. when you're talking about over rehabbing, it's you don't need to do anything above and beyond that because you're not living in it. You rehab to the comps. That's what gets home sold on budget and which hopefully you're making money. Uh, if you do that correctly, you don't have comps. No. And you also have another problem where your value is now assumed to be lower than what your original estimate was because of location. And you're having to overcompensate that by just adding more value in. More value, yes. Um, the only two comps that we had was uh, mobile home in the same size lot as ours. And uh, that one has sold for 205 or 210 So we figured, okay, well, knowing what we know about mobile homes, if that mobile home is selling for that, we should be able to sell for more. The, the theory. What, what was your initial rehab estimate? The, my original rehab was 35000 And that would take you roughly how long? To, 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 to rehab, yeah. Yeah, 
once we get started, I mean, that's, that's four or five weeks, five weeks. Yeah. Okay. Uh, you, do you recall what your original value, like your ARV after repair value estimate was based on that budget? So we're, we're also very, very conservative, uh, but at $35,000, it was supposed to be anywhere between 275 to 300 because we didn't know. Okay. So you bought it at 155, you got about 35 into it, but you're expecting to sell it for around 270 that we said? Uh, yeah. 275 to 300. Okay. Or 270 to 300, somewhere around there. We didn't know exactly. How did you finance this one? Um, well, uh, private lenders, actually. All right. Um, I have like, a lot of good private lenders. Actually, there's one right here. Jim, hey, what's going on? <laughs> <laughs> He's like hiding and in the this back. This is not on one of your deals, so don't worry. <laughs> so uh, let me put it this way. <clears throat> that there's, uh, there's different kind of money, and all money is good money. And by that, I mean that there's certain lenders that will do certain things and they'll understand what it is that you're trying to accomplish, but some feel more comfortable with certain deals than others. You know, I know for a fact he would have never gone for that. So I would have <laughs> never even gone there. So this other one, he goes there, but he's going to charge you for it a little bit more. Yeah. And, that, and that's what I mean. That it's, uh, some people get stuck on, on certain, like, oh, I have to make some money with this particular lender. But sometimes... That you have to go get different kind of money just because the deal could still be good. 